What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Nissan Versa. Huge thanks to Nissan for providing me with the brand new Versa here to review for you guys today. So about the 2020 Versa. So this is the you know smallest subcompact vehicle that Nissan offers, and uh, this class of vehicle is shrinking a little bit, but there are still you know some newer entries here, and uh, I'm really glad that Nissan is continuing to offer a small sedan because I do think there is a place for these in the market. And I think as far as subcompact vehicles go, this one is probably the most attractive one of the bunch. Now uh, I really like the stylish face that it has here. You know they added the new uh, V Motion grille here. You have these attractive headlights. The whole vehicle by the way is all new from the ground up and uh, so it has grown a bit as well so it's a uh, 1.8 inches wider it's 1.6 inches longer and it's also uh, 2.3 inches lower so a little bit more of an athletic stance and kind of stretched out a little bit and uh, so I think it really helps the proportions here of the Versa now there is no more Versa hatchback so it's just a sedan now but I think it's actually a very stylish little sedan and so you know you have these LED accent lights and LED headlamps which is great to have here for better visibility at night and I also love this monarch orange paint now this is an additional upcharge of a few hundred dollars uh, but I think it's nice to have a little dash of color here uh, with most of the other vehicles on the road being so bland with their colors these days you also have some attractive 17 inch alloy wheels here another interesting thing going down to the side you can see it has a little bit of a floating roof design which is something that's carried over from the Altima and I think the whole vehicle is kind of uh, looks like a little bit of a shrunken down Altima in some ways uh, but I think it's you know look, still looks really great with some pretty good proportions portions for again the size of vehicle we're in here out back it also looks pretty nice you know I think the uh, taillights are a little more stylish than what you usually get in this segment and uh, you know you even have a painted lower rear diffuser there which is a nice little touch as well here on this SR trim and uh, overall you know I think as far as like I said subcompacts go this one's a pretty stylish one First for the interior of the all new 2020 Versa. Well, it's really nice. They made some nice improvements here for the new ones. So first thing, sitting down in these seats. Now this is a fully loaded SR convenience package. So top line version, and we still only have cloth seats. Uh, they're nice cloth seats. You know, you have some uh, cool stitching and perforation kind of going on here on the sides, but um, still with stuff like the Yaris, you can get leatherette seats once you go up to the top trim. So it would be nice to have something like that, but they're still good cloth seats. And as far as support goes for a subcompact, I think they're, you know, fairly average and uh, feel pretty good. I mean, they held me in corners well enough. You know, obviously you're not racing around one of these things too much. So, uh, yeah, I think they're, you know, comfortable seats so far as well. Although they are still just manually adjustable. There is no auto adjusting, uh, you know, power adjusting seats here in even the top trim. So not a big deal, but, you know, something to note. Next is the steering wheel here in the Versa, which is very nice here. Now, this one is leather wrapped here for this SR version, but uh, it still is a rough leather. It doesn't feel feel very nice almost feels like it could still be plastic or close to it not a very nice feeling leather but I do like the stitching on it and I love the shape of the wheels the same as what you get in like a Nissan Rogue and many other Nissans and so it has a perfect 9 and 3 grip nice little 10 and 2 notches a flat bottom and uh, even some you know metal looking plastic here around you know the uh, bottom part and so that's nice it's a very nice looking wheel otherwise I just wish the leather felt a little nicer gauges though are pretty nice here in the Versa so you have this uh, half Half digital half analog setup and I like the analog gauge there for the speedometer very easy to read the digital portion is also very good um, the only thing that's weird about it so you can scroll through there the different options there's a few different things you can show your audio uh, trip information fuel stuff like that so that's nice to have but I just wish that in the middle there you could have the tack and your trip uh, information unfortunately you know you have the trip odometer but you don't actually you can't see your fuel economy and your rpm at the same time and that's really the only thing that I wish uh, you could do Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, you have a 7-inch touchscreen display here in the SV and SR trims, and uh, those trims are where you get the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. So I believe the base trim does not get that integration, even though I think you have a very similar screen. But anyway, so you got to go up to at least SV if you want the smartphone and stuff. But nice, you can have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, because stuff like the Corolla only does Apple CarPlay, and uh, so nice to have both here. And uh, just a few buttons, you know, very easy to navigate, and a pretty responsive touchscreen. Uh, you know, volume and tune knobs are nice. This one has a, S a Sirius XM radio as well. 
One thing I will say though is that uh, whenever you put the car in reverse and you have the backup camera on, it's a very low resolution backup camera. So uh, that's just something I think I also noticed in the Rogue. It's just they Nissan needs to upgrade their camera quality. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, still a good little screen there and glad that they have a touch screen. Coming down, you also have auto climate control here in the SR version. And the convenience package also gives you the heated seats, which are a nice inclusion. So good to have those. And uh, just a few buttons there, nice and simple. And all the knobs and buttons actually feel pretty nice for this class of vehicle as well so that's good um, other things moving on to storage space here you have right beneath that climate control uh, a actual old-fashioned power outlet as well as a USB jack and auxiliary jack in there you also see in the back a button for ambient lighting which is this strange package that this one has it has a few additional options that I don't think are worth getting $690 for that interior ambient lighting which basically just lights up the floor and then it also has external ground lighting which is kind of nice like a puddle lamp kind of thing and there's also an electronics package this one has which is $855 for map pocket lights, illuminated kick plates, and a frameless rear view mirror with a garage door opener. So that's also a very expensive package in this price point and something I would certainly skip. Um, but anyway, so that storage bin in there though is a good amount of space. You could easily fit a smartphone or something, a couple of smartphones in there, honestly. So good space there. Um, and then uh, other things here in the doors here, you have a map pocket with a bottle holder, which is good. Coming back over to the center, you have uh, two cup holders, which are a little bit on the small side, but seem to work okay for your average size cups and stuff. Uh, in this area though, one other thing I have to mention is that you have uh, just this hard plastic e-brake, which is fine, but it's actually sharp plastic around the buttons. Whenever you push your thumb in to release the e-brake, you actually, it's like a sharp edge there, which isn't pleasant. So, um, you know, I wish that was something that was a little bit nicer. Other things though, so you have this center armrest, which is actually a $300 option, even on this fully loaded SR trim. It is very nice and softly padded. I'll give them that, but this the way it juts out here for this little corner is just kind of strange and sometimes is a little uncomfortable just with the positioning of it. But anyway, you have this tiny little button, which is also a little tricky, but you use that to open it up. And then uh, you'll see it's also disappointing because it's fairly shallow. Even though you have this super tall thing, only about half of that ends up being a storage bin. So kind of strange. Not sure why you don't get the lower half as well. But um, it's a small amount of space, but you can just barely fit like a normal sunglasses case in there if you want to squeeze it in. Otherwise, you can leave it in the center there but um, so disappointing and especially considering it's a $300 extra I guess you just don't get an armrest or it's a lower one in the you know if you don't pay for this option but kind of a strange setup there um, but you know at least nice to have something I suppose uh, other things though that are uh, a little bit nicer so you do have a lot of hard cheap plastic but in this price segment that's par for the course so I can't really complain about that in this price point but I will say it's nice that you have this uh, on the SR trim and I think the SVs you get this padded dash here with the stitching and that's a, a nice inclusion something you don't get in a lot of the other competitors so uh, nice that kind of I guess spruces up the interior a little bit more uh, even though you still like I said have a lot of hard cheap plastic backseat space in the Versa is pretty good as well so um, it's actually you know a fairly spacious back seat and uh, me being five foot nine sitting behind myself I actually have about three inches of legroom to spare so legroom is actually very good the thing that's surprising though is headroom is kind of tight I maybe have about two inches of headroom to spare again being only five nine so I'm not a tall guy so if you're over six feet tall you know you might have to slouch a little bit or you know kind of uh, put your legs out a little bit further in order to have a decent amount of headroom there so that's uh, a little bit surprising but then considering this vehicle you know is over two inches lower than before I guess you know you do sacrifice a little bit of headroom there for the better looks um, so just something to keep in mind there if you often have very tall rear passengers you want to make sure they fit in there first before buying one of these um, other things here so you'll see uh, you have bottle holders in the doors there but unfortunately there aren't any real cup holders so you know there's no full down center armrest or anything like that um, but when you look forward you will see interestingly enough two more USB jacks which is kind of something that's even unheard of in like even like a 2020 Sonata only has one USB jack back there so to have two in this little Versa is a surprise uh, it's kind of strange you have more in the back seat than you do in the front but anyway uh, good to have those nonetheless but I would gladly sacrifice one of those uh, for some cup holders or something but overall still you know like I said the amount of space you have back there is actually really good for the class trunk space is also really good for this segment I mean it's a pretty long space nice and wide as well and uh, beneath the floor there you'll see that uh, you have a spare tire as well as a good amount of extra space that's not finished off as any kind of cubby or anything but you do have more space down there if you wanted to uh, you know store some things beneath the trunk and so overall you know a good amount of space here for again a subcompact vehicle
All right, so sorry, I'm going for a drive. Uh, the Versi here uses Nissan standard key they've had for several years now, but it does have these like metal feeling buttons here on the front. It's a nice small key, and I still have no complaints with this key. Uh, it's not fancy, but uh, it gets the job done, and I just like that it's small with many other keys being huge these days. Uh, so of course, uh, it's actually keyless entry, keyless access, and push button start on all models now, which is great. So you just uh, leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off here in the 2020 Nissan Versa. So first thing that I'm noticing is it's a nice, uh, easy driving position. So I feel like I have plenty of space here up front. You also have really good visibility. You have a very airy cabin. Uh, you have nice large side windows. I like the little A-pillar window there. So you have, you know, pretty small A-pillar. Very easy to see uh, through there and, you know, nice large windshield. So very easy as far as visibility goes. It's also, of course, a nice small vehicle. So it's very easy to park, very easy to maneuver and everything. So makes it very uh, non-intimidating, I suppose. Other things, um, so at lower speeds here, you know, it's a, a nice little cruiser. I will say that I was driving a few people around last night in the back seat, and uh, they actually said there was a decent amount of wind noise at some higher speeds there in the back. Um, but, you know, up front here, it, at least at lower speeds, it doesn't, you know, sound too bad. And uh, I've not driven the old Versa, so I can't directly compare, but I will say that it just, you know, seems pretty nice for a vehicle of this class. You know, the engine isn't too buzzy here at low speeds or anything. And, uh, you know, so no complaints as far as just cruising around goes. You have a pretty responsive throttle um, that's, uh, you know, fairly eager. The brakes do have a good amount of travel to them, though. They don't feel super strong, but we'll test that out a little bit more once we go into a back road. But let's turn down onto this back road here and see how the power is. Here we go. Okay, so it responds pretty quickly. <laughs> this CVT just sends it straight up the red line, but you do have some normal like shift points. So it's not just hanging out at red line uh, like CVTs often did in the past. So it feels fairly normal as far as the acceleration goes. Obviously the acceleration isn't fast. So it runs a 1.6 liter nationally aspirated four cylinder engine. It does 122 horsepower and 114 pound feet of torque. And horsepower is up about eight over the old version. I think you have about seven more pound feet of torque as well. So, um, you know, a little bit more power, but the vehicle does weigh about 200 pounds more than before uh, because of the extra length and width and uh, all the extra tech in here and stuff, the safety tech that they've added. So all those things uh, did drive the weight up a little bit. So you have a little more weight to haul around, but uh, zero to 60 is about 9.7 seconds. So slow, but you know, it's similar to you know, what you get in some small crossovers and stuff. It's not, you know, beyond, it's not slower than the average little crossover or something. So, you know, I personally, you know, around town, normal driving, I haven't had an issue with it. Uh, I think it's been enough power in this CVT is really well programmed to uh, not have to go to super high RPMs and kind of just keeps it in the meat of its meager power band in order to uh, you know give you decent acceleration around town. And so we'll do like a little you know more casual acceleration here. And you know it'll go up to 30 miles per hour just by going up to about 2,500 RPMs or so. You know very very easy. So I mean you know, this vehicle still only weighs about 2,700 pounds. So it's not like it has to work really hard to get up to speed or anything. And so. You know, overall, I think performance is acceptable for the class. And, um, you know, for most people, unless you're merging onto the highway a lot and you need a ton of power, I don't think you're going to find yourself really being too annoyed by the low amount of power in this. I think it's totally okay. For this class of vehicle we're in, you can't really expect much more. There's a few others that actually have less horsepower than this in this class. I don't think there's really anything that really has much more than this either. But coming up some corners here, see how the handling is. And you know, it's actually pretty flat. So we only have two of five wide tires here. They're all seasons, of course. And you have a torsion beamer suspension. So a pretty simple suspension setup. But I think having the, you know, almost two inches of extra width here and, um, you know, this all new platform, I think really helps to, you know, give this a pretty flat feeling. I'm honestly, you know, impressed with just how, how eager it is just to, you know, go into corners and stuff. There isn't really much roll. There's a tiny bit of roll built in, just, you know, for comfort's sake, but, I mean, I think it actually handles really well too. So as far as usual, just point A to point B stuff goes, this is actually still really, you know, good handling for its segment. There isn't a ton of grip there with those 205 wide tires. So, um, you know, the more that I push it a little bit, I can start to feel that there, you know, isn't a ton of grip underneath of me here. But, you know, it's good for, again, it's just having a 2,700 pound vehicle the numbers just don't lie. It's it's going to feel light in corners and that's going to give you good handling. So, um, 
I actually have no complaints as far as that goes. I think it actually drives very nicely. You do hear some road noise though now. We're getting up to some higher speeds, you know, 35 miles an hour or so. And as someone pulled in front of us, yeah, the brakes still just kind of feel a little weak. Um, so that is one thing I wish that there was a little more bite and that there wasn't quite as much travel for those brakes. But I'm sure the brakes aren't huge, uh, you know, for this class of vehicle, you have pretty small brakes. So um, that's just, I guess, something to expect, but I at least wish the travel of the pedal was a little less. But yeah, otherwise, you know, so I've already been driving this vehicle here for about 54 miles over the past couple of days and um, it's a pleasant thing to run errands in, you know. Um, I don't know if I would love taking on a road trip or something since you do have, you know, more road noise. But for this class of vehicle, again, you have to keep it in that context. I think this is actually very good for the class. I mean, even some larger vehicles, stuff like a Toyota Corolla seems to have a similar amount of road noise as this. So I don't think it's, um, you know, you're really going to be punished too much. The fact that you have a brand new vehicle here, you know, brand new platform, all new Versa, is going to have a lot of nice improvements here. Another thing to mention here is the steering. So steering is a little bit on the light side and there isn't really much feel, but it's average for uh, Nissan. I think the Rogue has a very similar type of setup, um, similar type of feeling as well. And you know, it's light, but for again, a little vehicle like this with skinny tires and stuff, I wasn't expecting the steering to be heavy or really sporty. And I think it's fine. Again, it's accurate and feels good. And again, I don't, you know, these types of vehicles, people like to criticize them, but I, there's really nothing for me to complain about as far as just normal drivability stuff. There's no, there's no real big fault. Uh, again, everyone would like more power, I'm sure, but uh, for the class of vehicle, you can't really expect much more. And I do like that there's like normal shift points here for the CVT. So in the past, Nissan CVTs have been some of the worst in my opinion. And I'm starting to sample some of the newer stuff here that Nissan's come out with in the past year or two. And I think they've really improved them a lot. Um, yeah, Cause this, I have no complaints with the CVT. But one interesting thing to note though, in regards to the transmissions is if you don't want a CVT, Nissan is one of the few that still offers a manual transmission. Uh, it's only available in the base model and that's it though. Unfortunately, so um, they're gonna have to do a bare bones versa if you want, uh, you know, the manual. But um, that does give this a little bit of a lower starting price than some of the others. Um, so it's not lower, I don't think, if you consider the automatic version than like a Hyundai Accent or a Kia Rio. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive because for some reason the automatic they charge uh, to go up to an automatic version of the base model. You're going up like another almost seventeen hundred dollars for this automatic, which is an abnormally high amount for an automatic. So I think they really kind of cut the cost down on that manual in order to have that low advertised starting price. So $15,655 is the base starting price here, again, for that manual one. And that sounds, you know, very attractive. Well, it is still a couple grand more than the old Versa started at. Um, but then if you want to go up to an automatic one, then you're paying about $17,300 for an automatic. And at that point, you know, it gets a little less competitive. Now it still is, you know, within a few hundred dollars of most of the competitors, even with the automatic. Um, and then this one as tested is like 21 and change, which makes no sense, but get, again, because there's one has like a thousand dollars of pointless additional extras like the carpeted floor mats um, you, you know it's nice having floor mats but that also includes a trunk mat um, and that's totally unnecessary considering the trunk is still carpeted and uh, yeah, that's like a two hundred dollar thing so there's a bunch of extra stuff um, if you want basically an SR convenience package that has all the features this one has aside from that little bit of ambient lighting and stuff um, you're gonna be paying about 19 and a half uh, for one of those and so at that price point again you get heated seats you get the auto climbing control you get you know the smartphone integration all kind of stuff for 19 and a half is a solid value and uh, you also get a bunch of safety tech so Nissan has their safety shield um, package is what they call it and so it gives you standard automatic emergency braking you also have standard reverse braking which is something you don't get in I think basically all the others you do have to pay a little bit extra like the convenience package also gives you the intelligent cruise control so that's the adaptive cruise basically so you do have to pay more for that um, but then even just going to the SV trim will give you blind spot monitoring so uh, you don't even have to go to the top top trim to get that so lots of good safety tech here that you do get it also has the lane departure warning which is nice but I don't believe there's any actual lane keep assist uh, but not a big deal there and so you know having those safety features is nice uh, but I think it still is a tough 
case as far as the price point goes. Obviously, again, this one at 21 doesn't make any sense. But even at 19 and a half, you're getting really close to the next segment up. And considering how many nice improvements you get with the next segment up, it's um, it seems kind of tough to sometimes justify. There's not enough space between this and the nicer stuff. You know, I mean, you can get uh, like a Kia Forte for about 19 and a half, and uh, you have a lot of you know, you get more power, you get more space, all that type of stuff, and you also get some of the stuff that's optional here as standard equipment and things like that um, and uh, then if you do want to spend a little bit more like even stuff like the brand new Corolla the 2020 Corolla you can get one of those for you know about 20,000 or you know 21,000 or something like that you'll miss out on the heated seats you got to go up to a higher package to get that but you do still get standard adaptive cruise that Toyota offers um, in all their models now which is great and so you have stuff like that and so it depends exactly on what features you want and obviously what your preferences are as far as styling and stuff goes um, but you know if you even if you don't want to jump up you know one to two or three thousand dollars more um, I mean it's, it's amazing how even just going like to 23 grand or just under twenty three thousand dollars for a Kia Forte EX will get you heated and ventilated seats so you're living like a king with cooled seats in the summer and stuff you get a larger screen all these types of things for only a couple grand more and much more space much more power all that type of stuff you know you're in such close proximity that it's you know for most people I think making a couple grand jump makes sense and if you can't make a couple grand jump and you're strictly at a $20,000 price tag or lower then you know someone who's in that value segment is going to be open to used cars as well and I know it's not fair to compare new versus used but you can even get a 2020 Corolla with low miles for under 20 grand even you know for a you know not base trim and so you know when you get to that it's just I would even rather have a vehicle that's like probably a couple years older so I can get more power, more space, um, and you still get uh, a lot of the similar safety tech even though you might not have the absolute newest stuff. Um, you know, you still get smartphone integration if you're only shopping within, you know, the past couple of years here and stuff. Most of those have had that in the past few years. So, um, you know, and you can even, I mean, get a Subaru Impreza, which has all-wheel drive as standard, and that's only about a thousand or two thousand more, and that gets standard smartphone integration and everything else as well. So there's there's a lot of value, and you're only, you know, a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, and even at a, you know, very low price point like this, it still isn't enough space to me to justify this as a new car. Now, you know, as these depreciate and once they're used vehicles, then I think the value is going to be a lot stronger, obviously, like any other used car. But if you have to have a brand new subcompact vehicle, then this is probably towards the top of the pack. And I really like it in that little bubble and vacuum of, you know, cross shopping. But then once you expand your horizons just a little bit, there's a lot of other really compelling stuff, uh, you know, for very, very similar money. Uh, one thing you do get though with the Versa here that is going to be a little bit better than some of the others is the fuel economy is going to be very good here. So these are rated at 32 in the city, 40 on the highway, and 35 combined. And so very strong fuel economy numbers in my, you know, about 60 miles of driving here. I averaged 29 and a half MPG, which is still very good considering it was mostly city driving, only a little bit of highway. So, uh, you know, good fuel economy. That is one thing you get with these small subcompacts. It's really nice. And so although that is about two and a half MPG less than what you're supposed to be getting in the city, that's on par with what I usually get here from vehicles uh, whenever I'm driving around. It's about two MPG less than the city rating. So on par with the rest. And, uh, you know, overall, I think the Versa is a really good value, again, in its class and in its segment. And I'm just impressed with, you know, here in the 2020 model year, um, just how nice even vehicles that are in the lowest price category are. They've made such improvements. They used to be so miserable and, you know, just horrible to drive and have no features whatsoever. And the fact that you get so much stuff for the money these days, um, I think is actually really impressive. And so, like I said, I really don't have too many complaints here with the Versa. I think it's a nice driving little vehicle. I just think you can get more vehicle for very similar money elsewhere. But anyway, huge thanks to Nissan for providing me with the Versa here to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on the Versa in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.